The most important thing to realise is that what drives the modern movement is a spirit of inquiry, it is a process of analysis. Charlotte Perriand is one of many influential designers of the mid 20th century. Her contributions to modernism were very powerful, but not well known unless you're a budding design and architectural enthusiast. Her early work is linked with the famous architect Le Corbusier and his cousin the architect Pierre Jeanneret. Throughout her career, she stayed dedicated to finding out the ways of modern living. Here is a video of her work shown at the Design Museum. Let's start from the beginning. Charlotte Perriand's interest and talent in creating and designing was sparked from an early age. Both her parents' trades were in the fashion industry. Her father was a tailor and her mother was a hawk and tall seamstress. But her interest in creating and styling furniture and living spaces came out of her studies at the École de l'Union Centrale des Arts Décoratives in Paris, in which she studied from 1920 to 1925. After her studies, she lived in an apartment with her then-husband Percy Schofield, to which she quickly became a rising star in the Art Deco movement. The first showcase of her work was when she submitted a silverware cabinet she made, which was exhibited in May 1927 at the Salon des Artistes Décorateurs. It was well received by critics. She then exhibited two room installations one of which was a recreation of her studio apartment she shared with Schofield. It was a former photographer's loft studio, designed to be open plan and multifunctional. She redesigned the apartment with bold, modern, inventive solutions to make the studio feel more spacious. She used cabinets with sliding doors and mirrors fitted from floor to ceiling to make the space feel larger. The first thing you'll see in the exhibition is the installation of her apartment at Place Sainte Sulpice called Salon des Artistes. Perriand used tubular steel bar stools and created a hovering effect with a card table by deploying chrome sheets of copper that seemingly appeared invisible. The stools swiveled and gave free movement for anyone sitting on them. The second is bar sous les toit, which translates to bar under the roof. And this showcased the home bar which entertained guests. She exhibited her space in the Salon de Ton in 1927, and when already established architect Le Corbusier visited the exhibition, he was very impressed. At the time, Corbusier needed to provide his upper-class clients chairs, tables and storage in a similar modern style to which he was designing his buildings. Other prominent architects during that time, such as Mies van der Rohe and Walter Gropius, were already using steel tubular furnishing for their interiors. And after seeing her installation, Le Corbusier hired Charlotte, where she quickly settled into work at his atelier on the Rue de Sèvres in Paris. In the exhibition, opposite her apartment installation is Perriand's chrome ball bearing necklace, which she wore during her first few years working at Corbusier's atelier. Ball bearing was a symbol of mechanical design. Wearing them around her neck was her demonstrating her passion for the machine age, which was an art movement in and of itself, and in the Roaring Twenties it was a different outlook to the Art Deco style, which dominated the decade. Mechanism was very prominent in all types of design. The use of industrial materials like metal and glass was a growing trend, particularly in architecture and interior design during the late 1920s and early 1930s. To the right of the necklace is a still life painting by Perrion's friend and colleague, the artist Fernand Lejeu, who also embraced modernism. A lot of his work contributed to the Cubism movement. In the painting, he has a metal ball figure displayed to the right to portray his own interest of incorporating mechanism in art. Together, Perrion and Lejeu collaborated on many projects like the connection displayed here. In 
the middle of the room, there is a showcase of some of the pages out of Perion's 72 page notebook, full of her ideas and works with Corbusier, Jean Arrette, and many of the other architects and designers working at the Atelier. Up until 1944, Charlotte kept illustrated notebooks where she documented key moments in her life. Her travels to Moscow, Greece, Japan and Indonesia influenced her work, which you will see later on in the exhibition. She was very observant and a lot of her designs evolved from existing furniture and products. Her tables and chair designs came from developing new techniques that sought to replace traditional wood carpentry with welded metal and cold bent steel. Lauriad noted down the cost and techniques it would take to produce her designs and compared them to other counterparts such as the Bauhaus's Marcel Brewer's chairs. Due to the lack of experience with metal furniture at the time, Perrion noted down the attempts made in the studio. Try with Ducco or Chrome Springs, she would note. Brugger's chairs and many industrial designers used screws to join their steel tubes together. However, Charlotte opted for welded, welding the tubes together, which opened up the possibility of a much more aesthetically pleasing product. The most prominent of her chairs is Le Chaise Long Basculon which you will see her demonstrating how to use in the picture where she also wears her ball bearing necklace. Perian Corbusier and his cousin Pierre Jeanneret collaborated to make La Chaise Long. Its goal is to be a sophisticated, elegant recline with an adjustable sliding cradle to suit the end user's resting needs. The finishes represented the industrial age. They developed the design from various reclining seats that already existed, such as the rocking chair and hospital beds. The chair was ergonomically made. The theme Le Corbusier had with all his designs, his mantra being that the house is a machine for living in, and this was the chair for relaxing. This exhibition also showcases some of her other chairs, along with their manufacturing plans, such as the Fauteuil Grand Confort, which translates to a very comfortable chair, and siège à dosier basculant, seating with tilting back. Both use spray steel tubing and hold spring core upholstery with four down-filled leather cushions. Basculant simply means tilting, and the siège à dosier basculant is an updated version of the British Army camping chairs, which were portable and had leather straps supported by a metal skeleton. Periand opted to make a more livable, stylized version for Corbusier's studio and clients. In the next room, there's a recreation of Le Corbusier, Jeanneret and Periand's installation, an equipment intérieur d'une habitation, equipment for a dwelling, which they exhibited at the Salon de Tom in 1929, and it was a huge success. At this stage, Periand was in her mid-twenties, a very young age for a designer. In the Design Museum, you can sit in the, this installation and test out the replicas of the furniture for yourself. As Perrion continued to work at Corbusier's studio, she was entrusted with many projects, some of which were abroad and away from France. Perrion worked on the design of a home in Buenos Aires in, for Corbusier's client, a lawyer named Julian Martinez. This was a chance to showcase the metal cabinets and chrome steel chairs that were successfully embraced by critics at the Salon de Tom exhibition. Here you can see the perspective drawings of the exterior and interior views of for Villa Martinez. The house was to be raised off the ground with a glazed facade and curtain walling, which was a signature design of Corbusier. Similar to the famous Villa Savoy, the design was to be whitewashed, reinforced concrete plastered masonry with open plan connection between the internal and external space. Periand included some of her interior design into the project. Martinez unfortunately did not wish to proceed with the build, however decades later renderings were drawn in CGI of what could have been. Again, chairs like the siège pliant and empilable folding stackable chair was another tubular steel design, this time with fabric similar to the beach chairs invented in 1882 by German basket maker Wilhelm Bartelmann. Perian loved to travel. Travelling wasn't just a leisurely thing, she took her work with her wherever she went. 
As mentioned before, she would carry her notebooks and jot things down as she explored. Periand also went on to document her travels and observations via photography. Her relationship with other artists such as Fernand Leger and Pablo Picasso grew throughout the 1930s and she often travelled with her peers and friends. During the 1930s, Leger and Periand travelled to the beaches of Croatia and to the coasts of France. There, during their vacations together, they would collect rocks and found objects, foliage and natural floatsome and jetsams. Committed as Perion was in the 1920s to metal furniture and the machine age, Perion was beginning to turn away from the industrial world of metal and glass and towards the world of nature. The catastrophe of the Great Depression and the rise of fascism in Spain, Italy and Germany drove designers and artists to look to nature and to the great outdoors for escapism. See from this collage called Le Grand Miserie de Paris, 1936, a collage created by Perriand and collaborators. It's their depiction of the crisis happening around them. To bring artist Fernand Leger up again, Perriand and Leger had a very close relationship. Similarly, Leger moved away from mechanism to nature in his work. His art consisted heavily of shapes and forms and his interests in the natural figure also interested Perriand. Perriand produced some sketches of a few designs like Maison au bord de l'eau, House by the Water, and Le Tritrinanon, which was conceived for a competition to design cheap holiday homes organised by the magazine L'Architecture d'Aujourd'hui, Architecture of Today. This was her way of embracing wood material professionally, and she went on to design a number of freeform wooden tables and chairs. The six-sided freeform table and the boomerang desks mirrored their namesakes. It was a new form of design for Periand, but she still focused on making the furniture functional. The boomerang desk was not only shaped like a boomerang, but she designed it large enough for group meetings. Her client was editor of the French newspaper Ce Soir, Jean-Richard Bloch. Bloch enjoyed the desk along with the swivel chair with which he could swivel around his desk to face other team members on the other side with ease and without imposing any hierarchy. Throughout the middle of the exhibition, there is an array of Perriand's furniture amongst her photographs of natural forms which interested her. Fernand Leger, Pablo Picasso and Corbusier's art also surround the area to which influenced Perriand's designs and beliefs of uniting design, art, painting, architecture, sculpture, photo montage, nature and functionality together in a habitable space. If you're at the Design Museum, you can pause this to have a better look at them all. Perrion travelled to Japan in 1940. There she would work as an advisor on the design and export strategy for the country for a few years and there she embraced the Japanese lifestyle. There she met and travelled with young artist Sori Yanagi. She allowed the culture and context to guide her actions. She wrote in one of her notebooks, what gives beauty and truth to these objects is that they serve. The people spontaneously recreated these objects in response to their needs. She produced many bamboo made furniture and would incorporate a lot of the Japanese style, i.e. efficient and modular, into her interior design. Post-war France was in reconstruction mode, so efficient modular construction was a priority. Further into the exhibition, you will see one of many interior commissions Perion did for her French clients. In 1952, Bibliothèque, also known as Bookcase, was designed for the Maison du Mexique, a student accommodation for expat students in Paris. Efficiency of the use and space was required in each dormitory. There were 77 rooms in all that required a fit-out. Perion used the bookcase to replace the partition walls between bedrooms and bathrooms, which made the furniture both efficient as a storage unit and as an integral part of the space. Mixed materials such as wood, plastic and metal were used to manufacture the furniture for ease of functionality for the students. Other interior commissions Perion did included the wall lights, applique à volet, designed by her friend, 
and herself, architect Jean Rouvet, in 1962. It's an adjustable wall light that has a metal swing plate on top to direct the light in certain directions. The light wasn't just an installation, but a functional piece for its end users. Throughout the late 1950s and early 1960s, Perrion worked designing commissions for the airline Air France, due to her then-husband Jacques Martin, who was appointed general superintendent for the airline. Perrion continued to take the opportunity to mix her love for travel and her knowledge of creating functional pieces for multiple-use interior space. She was first appointed to the difficult task of refurbishing their London-based office in New Bond Street. The centrepiece of the office was a floor-to-ceiling bookcase similar to Bibliotech, but at a larger scale. It divided up the office between potential travellers and the desks of the flight agents. A large image of a Cambodian sculpture was strategically placed in the heart of the office and next to the bookcase to draw attention to the main purpose of the space. A large boomerang bench met customers in the waiting area which welcomed potential flyers to the idea of exploring a different country, which you can see together in this exhibition. Perion continued to travel and work all the way into her 80s. Her work grew to incorporate travelling with the demands of everyday living. During the 1960s, travelling abroad was transitioning from an elite event to an affordable, mass popular activity for the average working class family or person. During her youth, she travelled to the Alps and the mountains of France and continued to do so all throughout her life. Back in the 1930s, she would not only travel to the beaches in the Mediterranean, but also to the snowy mountains. Herself and Pierre Jeannoret designed a steel and aluminium refugee holiday camp, which was another futuristic machine-like design, mimicking a spaceship depicted in science fiction-themed entertainment during the time. The installation had a compact interior where the furniture could be transformed again for multiple use, such as beds and benches um, during the day and cubic stools as storage space. The lightweight aluminium was used for easy mobility and the robust steel was to withstand extreme mountainous weather conditions. It was a first attempt to showcase affordable travel to luxurious travel destinations and would later drive Perion to explore mass tourism architecturally and bring affordable accommodation to the skiing destination, Les Arc Mountains. Up until the early 1970s, generally, skiing trips as a recreational sport were deemed trips for privileged and wealthy travellers. As previously mentioned, Perion herself was an avid skier and took many trips throughout her life to the Alpine Mountains. In the late 1960s, she took up the opportunity at Les Arcs skiing destination to, desi to design affordable accommodation for the resort. From the beginning, Perion knew she wanted prefabricated modular kitchens and bathrooms, for her experience in mass production was little, but it was extensive when it came to utilising space in the most efficient way. Her idea was to maximise the space for multiple families and groups at one time. Because the majority of the building was prefabricated, the drawings were planned in a specific sequence which would allow the construction process to be as smooth and as fast as possible. The kitchen and bathroom units were manufactured off-site and lifted in by cranes or periodically and strategically so that other trades could connect easily, such as plumbing, electricity and tilers. The building was essentially factory built and helped with installing onto the difficult terrain. Like cars were put together, it was a new form of constructing a building and is now widely used today. The kitchen and bathrooms had shiny colourful finishes which added a pop of colour and texture to the naturally rustic subdued pine wood of the rest of the interior. The rest of the rooms, such as the open living room and bedrooms, were deliberately designed to be minimal as Periand and the other designers wanted to the focus to be on the mountains. Les Arc was initially a small town with small cottages built by shepherds dotted around the mountains. 
Periand and the other designers of the project chose to embed the ski resort into the slopes, mirroring the mountain so that it disappeared into the surrounding and when it snowed the roofs would effectively become part of the landscape. Perion's attention to her environment and her creative reaction to it formed her legacy. She always looked to the future, but her main imprint in the world of design and architecture was her dedication to functionality and ergonomic priority. Her work has vastly influenced many designers today and her concepts will remain timeless. Thanks all for listening and I hope this was an engaging video. Here are some of the references which I've also put in the description below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and for more videos on exhibitions to visit, subscribe to my channel. A bientôt!